Hello, and welcome to the Cottage Witch Knitting Podcast. My name is Deanna, and I come to you from rural southern Virginia, where I live with my husband and two children. Today, we are going to be going over lots of knitting, um, lots of acquisitions, which, don't worry, I'll forewarn you about if it's not your jam, so you can drop then. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. It is a pretty muggy day here today, so we're going to brighten it up a little bit with some knitting. Um, For all of the information that I'm giving on any paid pattern, all of that information is available available in the Ravelry notes. Um, So nothing that is specific to the pattern itself will be given. just out of respect for the creators and designers that put so much effort into them. I will have all of the links down in the description below if you want to go and find out about these yarns, these items, these um, designs. You are more than welcome to and please try them out for yourself. So I am a beginner knitter. I am documenting my journey learning how to knit and everything that there is to know about knitting. So I learned a lot this month. In this monthly recap, we'll go over all of that. I learned that I was twisting my stitches and that is because I learned how to crochet first and the way I yarn over in crochet is the opposite of the way you're supposed to do it in knitting. I did not realize this. Thank you to the Mindful Creators again. I know I thanked you in my last video, but thank you again for letting me know. (laughs) Um, That video that you put out on things that you've learned was so very helpful, and I'm glad that we can share that information with each other. Um, We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. I have my notes right here in case you're wondering what I'm looking at because we have a lot to go over, so I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as I can so I'm not taking up too much of your time. Um, so the first thing we have in finished objects today is actually the Jackie Bean Knit Stitch Headband. I have a video right here, or image, because I actually don't have these objects anymore, the two finished objects that I have for you. Um, they were gifted, and I, the recipient was very happy to get them. She cried just a little bit, which, you know, always makes you feel good. So the... Headband and the Sophie shawl, but we'll talk about the headband first. Um, They were done in swish worsted weight from Knit Picks in black and voyage heather. These are 110 yards for 50 grams. And I think I used maybe one and a half skeins of the black and then just a tiny bit of the voyage heather for the knit stitch headband. And it's super soft. I love the fabric that it made. Unfortunately, I was still in the process of learning when I made this headband. So my gauge was all over the place. I was learning, you know, am I doing knitting too tight? Am I knitting too loosely? How do I hold my yarn when I'm doing um, color work? How many how many stitches do I go before I catch my floats? Do I want to catch my floats or do I want to just let it fly? you know, the stitches on this for the color work were not too far apart. I could have gotten away with not catching my floats at all. Um, For the first side of the headband, I did not catch my floats. The second side, my gauge was much looser um, because I was not putting any tension on my yarn at that point. And I was catching my float, I think, every stitch. And that I picked up from Knitting Traditions from Inga of knitting traditions she catches her float every float or every two stitches every stitch or every two stitches and um i have found that catching my float every stitch actually does work better for me and oh i just realized that i have something over there that i need to talk about today oh well i'll I'll grab that in a minute anyway um it does work better for me to catch my flow every stitch every two stitches depending on what I'm doing Uh, it creates a very even tension and I really enjoy that it 
makes my color work stretchy and I don't really have to worry about um, making sure that my floats are loose and that has been really nice. I have a work in progress that's pr a lot of color work and I'll show you what I mean by that when I get there. But so because halfway through this project I stopped tensioning my yarn, um, it came out too big. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go in and steek it. I'm a little scared of that. Of course, I could just pick up all the stitches and take it out and cut it and then graft them together. I might do that. That might be easier um, to graft it instead of steek it and use a Kitchener stitch. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But for now, see what did I learn? My thoughts on this. Oh, so that was the yarn. I used a five millimeter needle for these, which created a beautiful fabric. My mother-in-law, who these were gifted to, actually thought that it was bought, which made me feel so good. You know, there's a bit of a stigma about fast fashion when it comes to knitting, and but I think that when you are accused or if someone thinks that what you're giving them is or what you're wearing whatever it is is store-bought that's a huge compliment it means your stitch tension is so even that they can't tell it apart from machine knitting which is amazing so huge compliment I felt so good um let's see here so the pattern was really easy to follow it was a very straightforward. The only part where I really had to look at it, you know, after learning the color work pattern was actually at the end when you made the knot on the front. And that was really fun to learn how to do, how to make that knot for the headband. So that's what I learned on that one. So tension, twisted knot for the sewn together part. And, um, how to do my color work, how to do my stranding and my color work. So that, there were a lot of things that I learned on that one. That was really fun. Um, the second half of this gift knit was the Sophie shawl. And I really liked the Sophie shawl, like a lot. It was pretty mindless. I did have to keep track of my row count for this one. And I did this in Knit Picks Swish Worsted with the Voyage Heather. And this shawl came out once it was blocked it came out from my shoulder to about my ankle on both sides so it's probably just half of it is as tall as I am and I'm five foot six five foot seven give or take I'm not sure how many centimeters that is so sorry about that um but yeah that was it was absolutely massive I did go for the largest size obviously um, because my mother-in-law had asked me for a scarf and I made her a shawl, but it's kind of a scarfy shawl, the Sophie scarfy shawl. Um, <laughs> but she really loved it. It was, um, let's see here. I did that also with a five millimeter needle U.S. size eight. Um, I cast that on on December 30th and finished it January 14th. I was pretty much knitting on this monogamously. I did take some time periodically to knit on some things that I wanted to knit on. Um, I worked on some socks in the meantime when I needed a break and things like that. So I wasn't completely working on it nonstop. I do have a full-time job during the day that I have to attend to, um, but I, thankfully I work from home, so when I have downtime I can knit, which is nice. I found that garter stitch has a lot of stretch. I know that this is probably very common knowledge, but it was news to me. I'm still learning what stitches have what kind of stretch and give. So the garter stitch shawl had a lot of stretch so that made beautiful drape it made a great length for the shawl and I really loved that 
Um, I actually wasn't sure when I started this that I liked garter stitch. I really like knit stitch. I think it's clean. It's, you know, what you see in all store-bought sweaters. And that's really the look that I prefer is stockinette. But this was really beautiful when it was done. And I hadn't minded doing a garter stitch because it was for someone else. But now that it's done and I got to wear it a little bit, I really think that I want to make one for myself. This one, I think I would make mine in cashmere. I would either use Knit Picks, um, not Knit Picks, but uh, Knitting for Olive Cashmere, Compatible Cashmere. That's what it is. Knitting for Olive Compatible Cashmere or Cardiff Cashmere. Cardiff Cashmere is definitely more pricey, but I would only need... I think I used six skeins of the 50 gram worsted weight balls. I'm not sure how much of that I would need for that, but I think it'd be okay. I don't think it'd be too expensive, but maybe, well, I guess that's still, you know, a $120 scarf. But that's okay. Um, I might go with the Knit Picks just because it is half, almost half the price of the Cardiff Cashmere. We'll see. I really enjoyed the I-cord edging. That was the technique I learned on this shawl. And I really like the finished look. It makes the edges nice and crisp and clean. It breaks up the garter stitch a little bit and gives it a nice framed border. So I really enjoyed that. I think that's something that I might implement on other things. Not everything because sometimes you don't want a thick edge like that, but it's really pretty and definitely my favorite edging for this kind of thing. I think I might use it on more single thickness, not done in the round scarves in the future. Yeah. I definitely really like that. 10 out of 10 wouldn't it again. Obviously, I'm planning to make another one for myself. So there's that. And that's actually it for my finished objects. Hmm. So we're going to move on into works in progress. So, works in progress this month have been a little tough. I have two temporarily scrapped, well, one, yeah, I would say hibernation. Okay, so we have two projects that were put in hibernation because I'm mad at them. One, the first one, is the TARDIS coat, the car coat with hood from Yarnspirations. And that was done in Patton's classic wool roving, 100% wool, and it was done in royal blue. I will have some pictures here, maybe. I don't know if I want to show it. I'm a little embarrassed. But I did that in 4.5 and 5.5 millimeter needles. I did the smaller one for the, um, the edging. So this is... This coat's almost done, but I did not know how to properly gauge swatch when I started this project, and my tension was changing so much that it was just all over the place. So the arms that fit perfectly before I blocked it. And the arms are done in this really pretty ribbing. I'm not sure what to call it. But it was like a, an off 2x2 two two rib. And it was so beautiful. And I was so excited to get it done and wear it. But I sewed one arm, one sleeve on to the jacket. And the sleeve practically comes down to my knee.
Now, now that I'm sitting here thinking about this, I could just um, weave in my needles and cut it to fit, but I have to um, pull the sleeve off the coat. And it's a roving yarn, and it was already fraying and coming apart as I was putting it on. So I'm a little daunted by pulling it off. I'm just mad at it right now. Super mad at it. Like, even if I fix the arms, it's still too big. It barely sits on my shoulders. <sighs> I might just scrap it. I might finish it and give it to my sister one day. She's, she's bigger than me. She's a bigger girl. Um, so that might, that might work. I don't know. I'm very mad at it. It broke my heart. My own fault for not properly gauge watching. My own fault for not knowing how to keep my tension. But again, I, and it is my fault for going so hard on a project, a big project, if, without really knowing what I was doing. Story of my life. I tend to jump in head first, do what I want instead of practice projects. And this is the outcome. I don't think I'm going to venture into roving yarn again anytime soon. I might try let lopi or protolopi. Protolopi? Protolopi. Um, but the lopi yarns, the unspun yarns, I might do those on with less thick yarn. Maybe I would have an easier time of it. I, I didn't have any issues knitting it up at all. The issue came in when I was um, stitching the sleeve on when it started to fray and separate. But, yeah. So that is my TARDIS coat. My navy blue wibbly wobbly coat that will probably never attempt again. Maybe I'll attempt it again with not roving yarn. But it's done in a bulky yarn, so I don't know. Maybe if I did it in an orange yarn, it would come out fine. I don't know. All right. Whip number two. I was trying for my first pair of socks, the Universe Socks by Hobby. I finished one. And they're actually really comfy, and they probably... Did I block this? I think I blocked this. Yeah, so the cuff stretched a lot, and it's really loose and floppy, and I don't like that. And that might be an issue with the 2 by 2 ribbing across the whole sock. I really enjoyed the heel flap and gusset for the heel. I thought that was nice. That wasn't too bad. I don't feel like I've blocked this. I... I don't remember if I blocked these, um, but I liked the construction of this sock. I really enjoyed the heel flap and gusset. I did not make the other one just because the yarn is a little scratchy and not enjoyable to knit with, and I used the Hobby Christmas Sock Yarn. I got all three colors in the less sparkly color options that they had this year. Um, you can see where I had started the other sock, and I pulled it out because I was just not happy. I might come back to these. I don't know. I knit this with 2.5 millimeter needles and I went with the second size option that they had. So that's the eight, size eight and a half. Yeah. I think they only have two size options. They have a seven and a half and an eight and a half. I'm not 100% sure. My notes are not very clear on that. But I went with the eight and a half. Maybe I should go down a size because of the ribbing. That might make it better. I did struggle with the construction of the, the gusset here. I didn't understand the pattern description of what I was supposed to be doing. And maybe that's just my unfamiliarity with knitting patterns at this point. Um, but I don't think it was written very clearly for a beginner knitter. So, 
yeah, I just, I'm not happy with it. So these are in timeout as well. Might just frog it completely, might toss it. I don't know. We'll see. But these will not be coming back for a while. Now, let's talk about the whips that I'm happy with. The first one I have for you is right here. My hair's in my face. Um, is the Vintage Christmas Sock by Twin Stitches Designs. And I love these. They are super soft. I'm not, I'm not, we'll talk about this. First of all, I knit these with Knit Pick Stroll. And that is a 75-25 merino wool nylon blend. These were knit with 2.25 millimeter needles. And I did those with my um, Haya Haya sock needles. I really enjoy the magic loop method, I think, because I knit with my whole hand instead of my fingers. So in order to move the yarn, I push it with the back of my hand or move the needle, I push it with the back of my hand instead of lifting it with my fingers. So nine inch circulars don't really work for me because it's a lot of finger movement that I'm not familiar with, not accustomed to. Um, and so I definitely preferred Magic Loop for this. I like the ribbing at the top. I like that this hasn't stretched yet. I haven't washed them. I'm not sure. So, Rachel of Night Sky Knitting doesn't block her socks, I think. I'm pretty sure she doesn't. I think I got that from her. Because you wear them on your feet and they form to your foot. And you wear them enough, they, they're fine. So I might not do that. I don't really have sock blockers. I have one set, but they weren't, like, size. They were just generic Amazon sock blockers and I don't like them. I worry that they're stretching out my socks because it's not sized for me. So I might just not and maybe I'll get some sock blockers eventually. I don't know. But I'm really enjoying the construction of these. It's a very simple stockinette sock with stripes. It was done with a German short row heel which I'm not 100% sure I like the construction of. I don't really like the way it sits on the heel. I like the other ones better. But maybe that's just because they haven't been blocked. I was very confused by the double stitch. Um, like on one side it's good and it's pretty. You can see. It's nice and pretty. And then on the other side it's not. <laughs> so I think it's the pearl side. I'm not sure, but not exactly my favorite heel construction. The toe construction is beautiful. I love the toe construction. How it has this nice decrease pattern here. I really like that. I think that's beautiful. And I did a Kitchener stitch, my first successful Kitchener stitch on that one. It came out really pretty. So I'm really pleased with that. But yeah, I love these socks. I'm definitely going to do more from her. So this came in the um, the Oh So Holiday Bundle from her, I think. I forget what it's called, but it's a, a bundle of socks. It's, it comes with three socks. It comes with the vintage Christmas socks. It comes with the elf socks. And then I think it comes with the holiday star socks. Um, and I will post an image of that from her Ravelry page here. But I really enjoy these. I'm very happy with how they came out. And I just followed the um, image pattern, image from the sample in the pattern for how many stripes I did. And I actually like it. I think it came out, it came out a good size. It fits me perfectly. I think we have similar size feet. So... This is great. Yeah, this is beautiful. I've got the other one already cast on because we're avoiding the second sock syndrome 
it's in here somewhere. <laughs> a little bit. I haven't gotten very far, but the stripes are very addictive and they go very quickly and it doesn't seem like it's taking forever because you know exactly how much farther you have to go. So I really enjoy those. Really happy with that. Um, I, my family went up north to see my father-in-law this, not this past weekend, but a couple weekends ago. And I took the socks for car knitting and made the mistake of doing something I'm unfamiliar with in the car. I was doing the heel in the car, I think. And I dropped several stitches and didn't realize it until I was finishing it <laughs> and realized that my heel was unraveling. So I stitched that up as best I could. That might have something to do with the ugliness of half the heel. But I, I was able to catch everything and clean it up, and I think it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, oh, colors. So I'll learn eventually, and I'll get in a rhythm of what I'm supposed to be going over. These were done in three different colors, obviously. There's white. There is the holly berry, which is the red color. And then there's the, I think it's evergreen heather. And I like this evergreen heather because there's kind of a red to it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's like this, yeah, you can see it. There's kind of this red marling to it, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Sorry for my ugly fingernails. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. I like this sock yarn. And I will probably use it for my any other socks that I make. I have a couple that I do want to make that I have stuff for. But I was trying to do the invisible joins, the invisible stripes. Did not do a very good job of it, though. So you can see here where it came out where I joined the yarn which is unfortunate like on the I don't actually know I think I did a better job on the back maybe I stopped paying attention but on the back you can see that they the joins are pretty pretty invisible I did a pretty good job there. Not so good on the side of the sock, but that's okay. And that might be a tension issue too, because I was still learning about my tension. So we'll see how that goes. I enjoyed the using Stephen West's um, Weave As You Go. I forget what it was called. Weave in Stevens, I think he calls it. But um, yeah, you can see where I messed up here. This is where I tried to catch all of those unraveling stitches. But that's okay. It's fine. It fits. It's beautiful. I love it. All right. Let's see. What's next? Um, okay. So I think almost all of my whips right now are from Twin Stitches Designs. That's interesting. All right, well, the next one is the Candy Mountain Cowl, again, by Twin Stitches Designs. This was knit in Moonglow Yarn Co's 2022 Rainbow Advent, which is absolutely beautiful. I am almost done, I just have one more blue and then the, I think, five purple colors to go. And I'm just knitting this in the round on circular needles. I'm using, let's see here, what size needles are these? I didn't mark it. These are my 3.75 size 5 US needles, my Haya Haya's. Um, on it looks like 16 inch circulars. Um, this is perfect. I've really enjoyed the process of this knit. I halfway through this, I realized I was 
twisting my stitches. And I'm not entirely sure. Well, I guess I can find out where. Yeah. So you can see um, how I was twisting my stitches. They don't separate properly. They kind of tighten. Whereas at the end here, everything separates properly. So halfway through, I realized I was twisting them, and then I uh, fixed that. looks like about here between these two rows is when I fixed it and started doing it regularly. It's, it's a shawl. I'm not, or it's a cowl. I'm not concerned about it. Um, I was having issues with my tension. Oh, I think I was also not catching my floats here in the early stages. Yeah. My tension is definitely a lot better when I wasn't catching my floats. And then when I started catching my floats every stitch, the tension is actually off. So you can see here. So tension here is actually pretty beautiful, but then the tension here starts getting a little wonky. I'm really hoping that it'll even out when I block it, but either way, it's beautiful. It's really soft. I really love the yarn. I am in love with Moon Glow's yarn. It's a problem I have, and you'll see that when we get to acquisitions. They have a lot of their acquisitions. But that's okay. It's okay. I love the yarn. I'm happy with it. I'm going to use it like crazy. Um... I did make a modification to this pattern, actually. I removed one column of the color work. So in the pattern, and I actually have another sample that I can show you where I didn't remove a column of the color work. In the sample that she used in the pictures that are in the pattern, um, it is exactly the same the mountain peaks are exactly the same no matter which way you look at it. So if you look at the mountains this way, and if you look at the mountains this way as white mountains, it's exactly the same. It's just a zigzag. But the way it's supposed to be is that it is actually two here and only one here. And I wanted it to be, since it was an infinity cowl, I wanted it to be reversible no matter which way. Especially since when I was doing it, I wasn't paying attention to whether I started with color work or I started with um, the accent color, which I used um, Aspen for. And I started it with the wrong color. So my mountains were actually upside down. The white was the mountain and the color was the sky. And I didn't like it. So I took out that one column of the color work to make it uniform across the entire thing instead of having that extra stitch of color. But either way, I'm in love with it. It's going to be beautiful. I'm super excited. I actually started this early December. Not Okay, not early December. I should have started it when I started the advent, but I got really excited and just opened all of it so I could see all the colors. I regret that. Next year I'll do better. But I did not actually find a project and start knitting until maybe the 20th of December. Um, definitely between, you know, in that teen to 20 range. And I regret that it's taken me a lot longer. It would be, have been a lot easier if I was just doing, you know, the two sections of color work each day. The Or even if I was just doing one. Yeah, no, two sections. So it's just a set of the mountains. Every day would have been a lot easier. I would have been done if I had done it with the advent. But I didn't have a pattern. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just excited because it was, everyone was talking about Advents and the colors were so pretty and I loved it. And I'm definitely a bandwagon hopper. 
when it comes to events. I suffer from FOMO a lot, fear of missing out, and so I buy things without plans sometimes, but that's okay. Now I have plans. Um, so that's that. That's my cowl. It's almost done. We're getting there. Um, oh, that was, um, Moonglow Yarnco's Merino sock. I thought it was the DK, but it's not. It's actually the sock. Um, and that is, I believe, 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. Um, but her DK weight is 100% um, Superwash Merino. So this has um, the 25% nylon in it, which is good for socks. Not so sure it's going to matter in a cowl. But it is what it is. It's fine. So the next whip I have here is my first ever attempt at a sweater. This is the step-by-step -step sweater from uh, Handmade Black Florence. And I am in love with it. It is beautiful. I haven't gotten very far, so this is the front of the neckline. And then I did my German short rows. So she has some options in this. And I did this in um, Drops Nepal. That's a 6535 wool and alpaca. And this is what she did hers in. And it was a nice cheap yarn. And I went over this a little bit in my knitting plans video about how I had struggled with some a lot of expensive yarn sweaters for my first sweater. And I was afraid of messing them up. But this was perfect because it recommended Drops um, Nepal, which is very budget friendly. And the color isn't what I wanted, but that's okay. It's still pretty. I'm still going to like it. I had wanted a green, but this is not green. It's technically gray green. It looks blue. It looks blue to me. So it's a gray blue. But that's okay. Anyways, I did this in Drops Nepal in gray green not color accurate on their website and I have um, gray green and chalk I think those will be pretty together that'll be a nice the, the stripes are definitely gonna be more obvious than the sample um, the striped sample but I think it's still gonna be really pretty and I'm very excited about it I was twisting my stitches, you can see here in the neckline how they don't they don't separate properly. And I got this far and I had asked in my last video if I should rip it out and start over, but the mindful creator said not to because the um, twisted stitching on the neckline actually looks really good. I like the defined um, columns of knit stitch so I like that and in the pattern Florence has a couple options available to you to you know learn how to make your first sweater so she has the I think it's a mock neck or she has the folded neckline I opted for the folded neckline she also has the option to do German short row shaping or not to do German short row shaping and I am very much a person who does not like things that are pushing, pulling up on my neck and all of my clothes that do not have a V-neck of some sort, they tend to pull backwards and it chokes me a little bit and I hate how they sit. So definitely went with the German short row shaping even though it's my first sweater. I definitely think I'm going to be happier with it. So that actually works out for me. I'm going to continue, but I did make another gauge swatch so that I can see what my tension is, what my gauge is now that I'm not twisting my stitches. And hopefully it comes out the same. The swatch came out really big though, so I might have to go down in needle size. I got gauge before, but my tension has changed. So we'll see how it goes. And so it's over there. It's already been dried. I just have to check the gauge. So that's that. 
really happy with that so far. Excited to do more on that. I am, I don't knit fast enough to keep up with my ideas and the things that I want to do. Like I want to do the Lento sweater. I want to participate in the Let's Lento that Crabea is hosting. I don't know if I'm going to have the time. I have the yarn and I've swatched it. I have to check the gauge, but I have swatched it. I don't know if I'm going to have the time to do that one um, and this one and everything else that I'm working on. So we'll see. I think I need to pull back on how many whips I have going at a time. I was doing, I think, four. I was doing a garment, an accessory, a sock, and I think a blanket. I, well, the plan had been to have something crochet going at the same time, but that did not work out because I couldn't get myself to start it with everything else I had going, and then Valentine's happened, and now I have a Valentine blanket. But we'll get to that. Anyway, so you've already kind of seen this, but we'll talk about it, and these are the... the I was accepted into a test knit, which I mentioned in my last video. And these are the Candy Mountain Mittens by Twin Stitches Designs. I got the adult large. So these are going to be for my husband's uncle once they're blocked and ready to go. The due date is for tomorrow, and I will finish them today, but they won't block in time. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to test them. But the, she already put out the pattern. So I'm not sure how much that matters. I have discovered that I'm not a big fan of deadlines. <laughs> so this might be the only test net I participate in. It depends on whether or not I find something that I really like. But I love this. I loved the collaboration that went on. I made these with Knit Picks palette held double. And I knit them with, did I make a note on that? Yes, so I, I knit these with 3.75 millimeter needles. I did get gauge on these. Um, so that worked out. I had already known that I was, had been twisting my stitches and had corrected it before I started these. So these are done accurately. But what I was talking about with my um, color work tension earlier, is that these are actually really stretchy. I don't have any, like the black is just as stretchy as the green, the area in between is just as stretchy. I don't have any issues with them at all as far as tension goes. So while I need to figure out how to make sure that my tension on my yarn is even, so like you can see here, it was not the most even, here we go. Let me see here. I'm not the most even. Um, some of these stitches are bigger than the others. But I think it's okay. It is def My stitches are definitely bigger where you can see that I, on the sides, where I pulled, because right, I was doing magic loop, I managed to avoid... Um, the laddering, I think that's what it's called, ladders, but the stitches are a little big, so definitely still think I need to work on that a little bit, um, but yeah, these are great, I love these, I definitely love the feel of the fabric that Knit Picks palette does, makes, once it's blocked, it's a little scratchy beforehand, but once it's blocked and it's been washed, it's beautiful. It's nice and soft. I did these in three colors. Initially, I was going to do it in four because I thought, based on the sample pictures, that it was just four pattern repeats, but it turned out to be five. And I had gotten to my fourth color and then realized I had to do another one. And I was doing a gradual fade in my greens. Moderate gradual fade. As gradual as I could get. Um... And I realized that I was not going to be able to do that. So I pulled out the last row, this row here, 
and had started again, and, I, and my husband suggested that I just repeat the bottom. So it goes um, ivy, forest heather, clover, forest heather, ivy. And I think it turned out beautiful. I'm really pleased with these mittens. And I hope that the recipient likes them when I give them to him. So I am done with the second mitten. All I have to do is the thumb, and then these can go in the wash today, and I'll do those after this video. But those are my Candy Mountain mittens. Um, let me see here. It is worked with an afterthought thumb. Yep, that's all on that one. Oh, uh, the Knit Picks palette is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. I will get better at that. Um, we will try that with this last one, actually. So I don't have it on my list, but it is a whip. So I mentioned that I was planning on starting a crochet project and I didn't. I wanted to do the Charlotte's Dream Blanket and I've been wanting to do that for a while. Everything right behind me here in this box, in this cubby, is for that blanket, more or less. And uh, I couldn't figure out a time to sit down and really work on that because it's a pattern that I really need to focus on. So I was waffling over that. I was telling myself that I was going to finish a project and then I could cast it on. But Moon Glow Yarn Co. posted about how she does garter stitch blankets. And she's doing them, doing one in her vintage Valentine colorway. Yeah, I started one. I got her vintage Valentine set and had to start it because it's, it's a good mindless knit. It's just garter stitch. It's knitting back and forth. Um, and I think it's a beautiful... I love the marling on the yarn, not marling, I guess it's um, the inconsist inconsistencies in the dye because it's a hand dyed yarn. I actually love the way that looks and I really want to make a sweater out of hand dyed yarn, but that's a little harder because they only ha hand dyers only have so many colors available at a time. So you have to know really in advance what you're going to make and how much you're going to need. So I think I need, once I'm done with my current sweater and I'm working on my next sweater, which is probably going to be the Lento, I will figure out what I want. I have so many sweaters behind me that I still need to do. Maybe I won't. Maybe that'll be a future project. Maybe that's a 2024 project. We'll see. But yeah, I'm really loving this. This is done in my 4.4 4 millimeter US size 6 needles. I used my Licka needles for this. Um, and I think I've got a 32 inch circular on it. I'm not 100% sure. The Licka needle cords aren't marked like the Haya Haya ones are. I do prefer my Haya Hayas. <sighs> we'll talk about that when we talk about the needles. But as far as the project goes and the yarn goes, this is Moon Glow Yarnco's Vintage Valentine um, DK Weight, 115 gram. No, oh, those are the wrong ones. Hold on. It's 250 yards or 228 meters for 115 grams. And it comes in five colors. It is red velvet which is this color. After I use this color, it's going to be this one, which is rose gold. It's really pretty. And then we have the pastel peach color. We have the faded jade, and I have little tags on these so I know what they are. So I caked them up. We have the Sweet Tea, it's kind of this pinky brown color. I like that the faded jade matches my nails. 
this is like my favorite color this and um well that rose gold color maybe a little bit lighter are like my favorite colors so greens and pinks all right um and then we have one more in here if i can do it without knocking everything over i have the spiced cider color and i really love these colors so how it's done and it's a free pattern that she gave away on her Instagram, so you can just go over there and find it on her page. But it is, I think, 156 stitches on four millimeter needles. And it's just garter stitch back and forth. You use all of one color, then you use all of the next color, all of the next color, and go from there. So it's 115 grams of DK weight yarn, and you just make blocks of color with it. And that's it. That is it. That is all it takes. And I am very pleased. It's a very mindless knit. I know eventually this is not going to be a travel size project, but right now it is. So this is my very easy project for right now. I also have my socks and I'm loving this. I'm really excited to have this blanket. It's going to take a lot longer than it would for me to make a crochet blanket, but I love it. I'm excited. I'm very happy with it. It's very mindless. I can sit down and watch TV with my husband while I work on it. And it's just kind of wonderful. So that's that. So before we get into acquisitions, let's look at what I have in queue. What projects that I want to get to next. Um, so obviously, Obviously, there's the garter blanket, which I've already started. That was on my list, but I really wanted to start that. So, yeah. But I also want to do the Valentine Doodle Cowl by Jamie Lomax of Pacific Knit Company. And she put out a doodle expansion for Valentine's Day. There isn't a full cowl pattern. You'd have to get one of the other doodle cowls. In order to get the pattern for that but I'm very excited for it I would love all of this is for doodle cowls and it's all moon glow yarn co but I really want to do one I started a hat but I was using colors that I actually just had on hand because I wanted to do them and I didn't like them so I ripped it out but I really like her patterns. I really like the way they're set up where you can just kind of print them out, cut them out, and then just rearrange them however you like. I think that's really innovative. And so I have all of them. I have all of her doodle patterns. And I really like to do the, I'd like to do the Valentine one. So I think I've got a couple things that I want to do in February. I might put a couple things on hold or maybe I'll just finish them and I'll have things for February and March, but that's okay. I would like to do first, there's the garter blanket, which is going to be a long project. It's probably not going to be done this February, but I get to use the February colors. They're all the colors that I enjoy, very earthy tones, flowery tones, pink, very muted pinks and greens. Um, I like the kind of gray muted colors instead of vibrance. I don't really like ostentatious color. Um, so all of these are pretty good. These purples are really bright, but these are for uh, Halloween. So it's not so bad. It's not like there's electric green in there. But I would like to do the Valentine's Doodle Cowl. I would like to make a pair of Valentine's socks that I had to finish the socks I have from Christmas before I can do those. Um, there are a couple different sock patterns that are coming out and then there's the Stone Knits sock pattern which I have the book for here. Somewhere. Oh, here it is. I think her her art sock pattern is in here. And this is the Charming Colorwork Socks book. I got it for Christmas from my dad. 
who's wonderful. Um, yeah, so you can see here, these heart socks. I would like to make, I'm debating between these heart socks and then Alindria Knits on Instagram, I'll put her design here, is coming out with these socks. And I actually really like the way these look. Um, they are blocked in a way that, where are all these other ones? Yeah, they're blocked in a way that it's, you don't have issues with having to hold three strands of yarn at any given time, it's only two. So I like the idea of that. Whereas the stone knits ones, the hearts kind of overlap each other, if you look. Um, so there are going to be times where you're holding three colors of yarn. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I have a pattern for heart socks. Do I really need to buy another pattern for heart socks? Maybe. They come out in two days. I might buy them. I think I'm going to buy them. I'm going to probably buy them. I think it's the Heart Explosion socks by Alindri Knits is what they're called. I'll link the um, link to the pattern down below to both of them. I also want to do the Lento for the Let's Lento Crochet Knit Along. Sorry. I'm a crocheter at heart, but I'm really loving knitting. So I might do that too, but I have to finish my other sweater. I think what it's going to be is it's going to be one sweater at a time. Finish the sweater, cast on the next one. And that, that really was what I was doing. One garment, one accessory, one sock, one other. But I think it might be too much. I'm not going to complete them very quickly. So maybe it's just going to be one big project, one small project, and my blanket. I don't want to set myself up so that I get bored working on a single knit and I don't have anything else cast on. I should work on what I want to work on when I want to work on it, but I also want to have the satisfaction of having something done. So we'll see. I think I have too many things cast on right now though for me. But that is my knitting plans coming up. I have a lot of acquisitions, as I said. But we're gonna try and get through these pretty quickly because it's an hour already and we need to get this show on the road. So, acquisitions. Um, I did purchase myself some knit blockers, some mats and I know you don't need them, but when you need to hard block something, it's really nice to have. So I did get myself some. I have three sets of them, which I needed when I was working on my jacket. So it worked out well. I'm not going to show you those because they're just knit mats. Um, Parched. All right, I did get myself some Haya Haya 8 inch sock cords. I don't know if you can see them. There. There's these little cords. I forget what they were called, but it was like zip cords or throwing cords, something like that. I got those off of Amazon. Um, because I wanted to do my socks on a circular, but I think the needles I have for my socks are actually too long to do that, and I think they have to be done as um, magic loop. But that's okay. Maybe I will get myself some of the three inch Haya Haya's at some point, but right now I have the five inch, so. Not going to be useful to me anytime soon, but that's all right. Um, the next thing I got, so I am part of the Twin Stitches Designs Patreon. 
and she is currently doing, and I will link to her Patreon below, she is currently doing a designer of the month for hand-dyed yarns. And I got two sets. Well, it's two every month. So for January, we have um, Craftnut's Yarns, Craftnut Yarns, and Nicole C. Mendez. So the Craftnut Yarns is actually really beautiful, this variegated blue with a very vibrant dark blue accent that she sent out. So those are really pretty. And these are 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. It's 492 yards for 100 grams and for the larger one. And the smaller one is 93 yards and 20 grams. And this is in fingering weight. They're super soft and I'm really excited to make these into socks. I'm not sure what socks I'm going to do. I think probably just a vanilla sock because they are variega um, variegated. So that's probably what will happen there unless I go through my Charming Color Work Socks book and find something that is just meant to be this beautiful sock yarn. Like maybe the um, Counting Sheep Socks. I would need a white for that. This is a fingering weight. I don't know. We'll see. I could probably do the sheep. I have a white sock yarn. Oh, well, we'll see. But either way, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's super soft. And I'm very excited about that. The other one I got from that is the Nicole C. Mendez sock yarn. This is 80% merino extra fine virgin wool and 20% polyamide. It is 400 meters or 437 yards for 100 grams. I am not sure what the accent yarn is, but this is in her celebrations colorway that is exclusive to, both of these are exclusive to the Twin Stitches Designs Patreon. So um, yeah, this is in her celebrations colorway. It is a self-striping. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm excited to see these, comp these stitch up. They're going to be beautiful. I will probably use um, the vintage Christmas sock design as a base and just not, you know, do the stripes since these are kind of self-striping yarns. But I like the way those knit up. I might do a heel flap and gusset instead of just the German short row heel. Or maybe I should just practice the German short row heel. But either way... I love these. They're beautiful. They're soft. I think this is actually a DK weight. No, they're the same. 492 yards fingering. This is 437. This might be a DK weight. Um, so we've got DK and then we have socks. So yeah, that's that. I'm just going to put these over here because I've already talked about them instead of putting them in my box. I should have grabbed my... Right. I'll be right back. I'm back. I got myself a box so that I have a place to put all of these yarns without putting them on the floor. Because I have dogs, and I don't want my yarn on the floor where the dogs roll around. All right. So the next thing I got was for my step-by-step -step sweater and this is drops nepal in 65 percent wool 35 percent alpaca in the gray green which is color 7139 and then i got the same thing in chalk which is color 8915 they don't actually put the color names on their packaging which is interesting but yeah really soft I'm enjoying them I know that these are probably going to pill a lot but I think it's okay it's my first sweater and I can just depill it worst case scenario eventually one of these days I will knit it again in something a little nicer but that's that 
I got sweater quantities in both of those yarns, obviously. I think I got 12 in the gray green and 5 in the chalk. Yeah, that's what I got. So the next acquisition is for the Honey Purse by Petite Knit. I know it's a honey brioche stitch, so that's going to be something I want to learn. I'm very excited about that. First off, I got the liner and the 23 centimeter zipper by Petite Knit for my honey purse. And I used the recommended yarns for that. So I got um, 7 is Garn Sunday, and, and that is in the recommended, I don't know, it says color 2511. I don't like that they don't put the color name on them, but I'm pretty sure it's almond. Did I mark that? Yes, it's an almond. And then I got the Tin Silk Mohair from Sadness Garn as well. And that is in the colorway kit. So I will hold these two together to make my honey purse. And I'm very excited about that. Again, it's mohair. I'm a little terrified by mohair just because I know that pulling it out, it might not. But we're going to try. I think this would probably be an easier thing to try it on than a full sweater. So maybe I'll do this before I do one of those really big... Um, mohair sweaters that I have sitting behind me waiting but that is that for the Sunday purse or not Sunday purse but the honey purse in Sunday alright the next thing I have are actually something from Etsy and these are from Tesla Baby on Etsy and they are little pastel needle stoppers and they look like little d20 dice and i thought that was the cutest thing because my family is into D, &D. well my son is i am i got my son into it <laughs> and um i love that they're all in pastels i have a um, pink pair which is my favorite color pink um but they're on oh and a blue pair so the blue pair is on my candy mountain cowl I don't actually know where the pink pair is. Is there acorns? Oh, I know. I have the pink pair in my Notions bag. So if I need them, if I lose a set and I need to use them on the road, I have them. So they came in pink, blue, green, yellow, and purple. And I love these. I love these little needle stoppers because... I tend to use metal needles and they fall off. The yarn falls off the needle. So that's those. The next thing I got is actually one of those sweaters that I was just mentioning. It is for the Petite Knit um, It's not the No Frills, it's the other one. The Novice Sweater by Petite Knit. And I did the recommended yarns for that. So I've got a sweater quantity of this Jensen, the Sigur Jensen yarn. This is 100% pure new wool. And it is 250 meters for 100 grams in their, I think it's their undyed color. Um, and then with that, I will be holding Isagur Silk Mohair. And I believe this is their champagne color. This is 75% kid mohair, 25% silk in a 25 gram ball that is 212 meters. So that is color number six, which I do believe is champagne. I did get a sweater's quantity of this for that novice sweater. Um, I got five of the Jensen and six of the champagne of the mohair. Um, I'm a little bit of a bigger girl. I am trying to lose some weight, um, but I'm not hurting myself to do it. I do intermittent fasting, but not in a way that I feel uncomfortable. 
so I eat what I want when I want. And if I lose weight, great. And I have been, which makes me happy. So I think I'm going to make this in the large. I know there's a lot of positivities on the vies on the petite knit sweaters, and I do like positive I like things a little bulkier just because I have a little bit of tummy. I don't want that to be seen. It makes me uncomfortable. But it might end up being too big. Either way, it's just going to be a big comfy sweater. And I'm very excited about that. All right. Next on the list, we have two, another Etsy purchase, which is two project bags. And these are from, you've kind of already seen them. They're from Sue Tribal on Etsy. Tribal. Um, I'll put her name below somewhere over here. But she makes these really beautiful bags. And they were advertised, I think, from Twin Stitches. Yeah. They were, I think they had a sale or something. And Twin Stitches was posting that. But either way, these are her sweater bags. And I got the Harry Potter one, and then I also have the, um, this one in citrus. And they're super cute. And they have a pocket on the inside here. They have an inside pocket here. And attached to that inside pocket is actually a little notion holder. So you can put your stitch markers on it. And I think that's like the greatest thing ever. And there are also under, under this pocket here, this colored pocket, there's um, pockets on both sides. I think three on both sides um, that are in just the regular fabric color in fabric is patterned and I love that so whatever you need this will hold it right now I have a couple balls and it's only filling up this much for my step-by-step -step sweater so you could actually hold a sweater quantity project in here which is great the Harry Potter friends one I got has Harry Ron Hermione and Draco on it which I think is wonderful. Here's what I found. And on the inside, which is really what sold me on this one in particular, but it's got the Deathly Hollows in this pretty gold color. And it also has all of the um, little pockets in it. That's currently holding my Candy Mountain Cowl. Oh, and they also have these are actually pockets on the front. They're very deep. And then the bottoms are this kind of faux leather. So they sit flat and it's it's just beautiful. I am in love with them. They are fantastically well made. 10 out of 10 recommend Sue Trable on Etsy. Um, go get your project bags from her. She's awesome. I have one more bag to show you. This one was definitely pricey, but I am in love with it. This is from Max Carpet Bags. Max Carpet Bag Works on Etsy. And this is the knitting bag that they have on there. And it's absolutely beautiful. It holds everything. It is extremely well put together. There are three pockets and a big zipper pocket in here. Um, the zipper pocket's only on one side, the three pockets are on both sides. And it holds absolutely everything. On the back of the bag, they also have this pocket here, and this is meant for your needles. So you put your needle book in here. Right now I have another bag in here, which is technically their makeup bag but I use it for my notions and I have my, my stitch markers on them. So I have access to those when I want them. 
but it's very well done. So I hold all my notions in there. You can see the little, um, over here, if I can get it in the light. The little, um, needle stoppers that I was talking about, the pink ones that I love. Those are awesome and it holds everything. I've got in here some petite knit stitch holders, some elastic cord should I need it, my itty bitty crochet hook in case I drop, my stitches, I've got my yarn tape, scissors, cable needles, gauge swatch thing. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. The construction is absolutely fantastic. It's very well made. It's leather and um, the car the carpeting is actually really soft. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. I'm over the moon about that. I definitely want to get myself a purse and maybe a travel bag and like I, I want the whole set. But that is going to be a slow process because they are pricey and they are handmade which is beautiful they are made to order so if you order one they will take a couple weeks to be made before they are sent to you just so you're aware um i got a couple things from moon glow yarn co obviously i did purchase the vintage valentine dk sets from her i ordered one set in the 100 gram and that is this oh let me just go ahead and i'll scan these Okay, here it is. So I ordered one set in the 100 gram, which is actually sitting behind me. And then I ordered two sets in the 115 gram because I was planning on making a blanket for myself and my mother. And I forgot that I had already had, I already had yarn plans for my mother's. So I just got an extra set for nothing. Oh well, I'll use it eventually. But I love, Moon Glow Yarn Co's yarn. And again, this is 150 grams for 228 meters of superwash merino wool. And I love it. I'm excited for it. It's super soft. I'll put all that away after this video. It's almost over. I promise it's almost done. Um, <coughs> oh. So I got... I was getting into test knitting and I decided that I needed to have yarn on hand for these test knits so that I was just prepared and I could just start. So I got Holscarn Super Soft 500 gram cones and these are 100% wool. This is their colorway Nougat. This is their colorway coffee. So that was a really pretty brown. This is the colorway graphite. This pretty, pretty, really pretty gray, black, marling, speckling. I guess it's speckling, but it's really pretty. And then I got lark which is this pretty green. So I have those for sweaters. I do want to use them. Rebecca of the Crayopea Knitting Podcast recommended those yarns for sweaters and they are very budget friendly. You get 500 grams, which is, oh dear Lord, how much? This is 100 grams of the Holscarn Super Soft is 575 meters. Wow. I got 500 grams. So that's what? So that's 23,000 meters approximately of yarn. I don't know if I can get two sweaters out of that. But I can get one, 
and have almost a full sweater left over, at least for larger sizing. Um, I might, as I lose some weight, maybe I can go down in size and get two sweaters out of it. That'd be cool. But I do want to make a couple sweaters out of that for my father and my husband. So we will see how much of that we're going to need and what colors I get to use. But I'm excited. I'm excited for those. <sighs> All right. So that's those. I got... I want to make the Magic Toadstool Socks by Stone Knits. So I did get myself some Knit Picks Stroll in the Rainforest Heather. I'm sorry, it wasn't Evergreen Heather for that vintage sock. It was Rainforest Heather. We have White. We have Grizzly Heather. She has this kind of gray-brown color, which I think is really pretty. And then we have Strawberry for the Mushrooms. And I think this is going to be really fun. I really want to make those socks. They're very pretty. It also has, I think, a fingerless mitt option, too, which I would like to make because my hands get cold very easily. So that is that. I have three things left. One, when I got my... Um, vintage valentine's sets i also got the sock set by moonglow which comes in all of the colors with spice cider being the main color and this is the 7525 merino nylon blend it is 423 meters for 100 grams i think that's the main sock and then these are probably, I don't know, 10 gram mini skeins. So I should be able to get at least one pair out of that. I might be able to get two. Which would be great. I don't know. It depends on how far these little mini skeins go. We shall see. But I know that the 20 gram skeins go a long way. Like a surprisingly long way. So we will see how much I can get out of this. It's 150 grams in total. So yeah, they're 10 grams each. <clears throat> so I will be making my Valentine socks out of that. That is it for yarn. But I did also get myself a set of Licka needles. Because I just love beautiful driftwood needle sets. I think these are absolutely beautiful. I am currently using these on my mittens. These are the needles I'm using for those and they're beautiful I love the case it's so soft this gray case which is their default I think for these I love them I definitely do prefer metal needles but on occasion when I want something a little prettier and I just want something nice to look at I will probably be using these and then last but not least I got myself um, Knit Picks actually relaunched their cedar wood boxes. So I want to knit socks, and I got two of these boxes. I think they can hold about seven pairs of socks each. So these are where I will keep my hand knit socks. I think that is everything. Oh, no, one more thing. I'll be right back. All right, there's one more thing that I got that um, it actually took a little while to get here. We had some trouble with the post on it, but the seller was super accommodating. Um, they were very, very helpful. So this is the... Kraken color work ring from Wonka Vision Co. Can we focus? But this is for holding your color work while you knit. 
And I'm actually very excited about this, so... It's very beautiful. I've been doing a lot of color work and I will definitely be using this as I finish up my Candy Mountain Cowl. I'm kind of hoping that it helps with my tension um, because right now I hold both of my yarns in, my, in the same hand, on the same finger, in the same way. I just haven't really been able to find another way to do it. So I'm hoping this helps out. It's very beautiful. The seller was extremely helpful and accommodating when we were having issues with the post actually getting it to me. But uh, they, it does seem like they mail in batches so that they make them in batches and then send them off. But yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm ex extremely excited to try it out. But that is everything. Oh, good Lord, it's been an hour and a half. Oh, this is a long one. I had a lot going on. I had a lot to talk about. Hopefully these will get a little bit shorter. I'm not sure they ever will. I'm hoping to have fewer acquisitions, that's for sure. I spent way too much. But I do it so you don't have to. I'm here for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, that is everything. So thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for joining me. I will be having these monthly recaps at the end of every month. I'll probably post them on the last day. So today is the 29th. Means I have to get this video ready to post and loaded. Um, and we'll get that going. But yeah, that's all I have for you for today. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.